how if you're trying to rely on uh, social to sell your products or your services, then you are doing it all wrong. Now, this, you might be thinking, God, Lou, have you lost the plot or did you get out of the wrong side of bed this morning? So I'm a digital marketer, right? I run a boutique digital marketing agency uh, where we work with service-based business owners um, to sell their products and services in the online marketplace. Now, turning that around and saying if you're relying on social media to uh, sell all of your products and services, um, you might be thinking that that kind of contradicts itself. But this is why I think this, right? So social media platforms, and we're going to talk about Facebook and Instagram and even LinkedIn, um, they are more B2B or personalized um, platforms. Now, I say that because I don't personally use TikTok. Um, I don't personally currently use Inst uh, not Instagram, I uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't use mm, Pinterest. We've dabbled in. Uh, we're dabbling in a little bit. Um, I don't use Pinterest Shuffle um, and whatever other platforms are out there, right? So we're just going to worry about those ones. So these platforms house like billions of people. And in case you hadn't noticed, as consumers, we get a lot of information as we scroll very, very quickly. And I believe that it's gone from um, a five second attention span to about a two second attention span. And the other thing is, so, so not only are we consuming a lot, but when we do consume, we don't really consciously see a lot of what we have got in front of our face unless it really grabs our attention. Then we might scroll back up or we might click on it and then we'll go ahead and we'll look at different profiles and websites and things like that. So uh, there is a lot of noise, as you may or may not heard marketers say. There's a lot of noise in the online market space and it's quite challenging, firstly, to be seen and then to get people to invest time and energy to understand it because of the amount of people on there. Now, the flip side of that is that once we do manage to get that person uh, attention and they come along and they like or follow our page and then, you know, they go ahead and they like a few of our posts and they comment and they might click on view shop and, you know, do all of the things that we do. Like once they become a follower of ours, that's great. That means that they're interested in the products and the services that we've got available. Now, that is only really great if they continue to engage with our content on that platform. At the start, that person, once they come along and they like us or follow us at the start, they will see more of our content because the algorithm says, oh, this person's new, they must like it, we'll put more of this content in front of their face. Um, once they go along and they follow new people, obviously that starts moving down the funnel and we kind of drop off unless they continue to engage with all of our posts, um, then we will stay top of mind and top of, you know, I guess the, the algorithm funnel per se. So at the end of the day, if we've got, you know, followers coming along and liking and following our pages, that's great. We've got to then keep them and warm them. Uh, but did you know out of our followers, only about 2% of them see our posts on a regular basis. So one, it takes a long time. It takes, a, um, I don't know on average how long, but it takes a very long time for our posts to actually get consciously seen by somebody. Then if they don't stay engaged, even if they follow or like our pages, the chance of them seeing our posts and then if they actively look for it is even limited. So it's a very challenging place to be marketing, right? Hopefully you've understood that part. Now, I love it. Obviously, as a digital marketer, I love these platforms. I love that there are billions of people on there that we get to build relationships with, buy from, sell to, uh, make friends with keep up to date with our friends and family. There's so many reasons why I love these platforms, but they are very challenging for businesses. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding of just how challenging that is. Does that mean that you should give up and that you'll never sell anything? No, of course not, right? Like there are a lot of businesses out there that like market fully online and have built really great followings, um, and you know, and can continue to grow 
month on month and year after year. Uh, it's amazing to be able to grow, uh, to build a business in the online marketplace because when things come along like global pandemics, we're not hugely impacted, you know, by people not being able to um, to learn more about our products and services. Because, of course, um, you know, we can continue to build those relationships and have them understand more about who we are and what we do and our values and how we can help them, you know, in this platform or in this space. But when it comes to solely relying on, you know, just Facebook and Instagram or whatever platforms you may be on, like you're making a massive mistake. And the reason for that is because this is one wheel in the whole, I guess, what I call the marketing matrix, right? So it is one way to be able to reach people who may or may not like your products and services, to be able to build relationships with them. Uh, and then, of course, you know, when, they, when we've built enough trust and enough of a relationship with them and our consumer gets to know or our ideal customer or client gets to understand that we can solve their problem, then they'll go ahead and they'll invest in what they need. Now, that is a journey in itself and every customer has a different way in which they decide to buy and the customer journey can be is, is very unique. It's just like our fingerprint, it's very unique to a person. So... If this is only one cog in the wheel, if this is only one part of how we should be selling our products and services, what else do we need to be doing, right? So this is where email marketing comes in. So believe it or not, even though I love digital platforms to be able to grow a business and connect with um, you know, people that I currently already know or people who I don't even know yet, the main objective is to use these platforms that house the people, right? They're online marketplaces. House these people is to be able to create reasons for them to join our email database. Now, so many people out there think that email marketing is dead, and I'm here to tell you that it is 100% not. It is still at, like the highest way to be able to convert customers and clients into buying what you've got available. So over 80, like um, over time, 80% of people are going to purchase from your email database. So why is this? Why is this still such a high performing way to market and to build a business when we've got all of these other ways out there uh, now that look like social media platforms? So firstly, why do we want this? So we want to be able to build email lists because at the end of the day, if it takes so long for somebody to know that we exist on a social media platform, when they do know, they hardly ever see our content, right? It, it, the cycle of them purchasing is very drawn out and we're leaving a lot of it to chance, really. So the goal is to be able to encourage them into our email marketing so that they see more of our content. When we opt in to receive email marketing from businesses and brands, whether they be big or small, like we are very selective. I don't know about you, but I often go through and I unsubscribe from things that I no longer want to hear from. And then I resubscribe to businesses that I do want to hear from, you know, that interest me, that I want to know more about their products or their services. Um, if I'm going to invest in their service and I want to get to know them, what they talk about, what their values are, how they help people, you know, I get to know that person via an email, like let's say every week, as opposed to having to talk to them on the phone or DM them or anything like that. That may be the next step for me, but I can do a whole lot of research on the products and the services behind the scenes before anyone even really knows that I exist and that I'm interested. So one, social media is great. It is a way of marketing. Uh, it, it's a long-winded way of marketing to build relationships, but when we do, the number one goal is to get that person off that platform into our email list. Now, another reason why we want to do this is because, believe it or not, I'm going to say 15 years ago, roughly, don't quote me on that year, um, Facebook didn't exist. Instagram definitely didn't exist. TikTok didn't, Snapchat didn't, WhatsApp didn't, uh, Pinterest didn't if you are catching my drift here. Uh, social media, I think MySpace existed uh, the, and a couple of other things, you know, like more chat room based um, 
like I guess uh, ways for people to connect. So Facebook and Instagram and all of these platforms that have, you know, I guess risen over the last 10 to 15 years were not available. So that can happen tomorrow, right? Even though these platforms have been a part of our lives now for such a long time, tomorrow the creators of these platforms might go, you know what, um, this doesn't bring me joy anymore. I've decided to take a different direction in my life and I'm going to go and do this instead and that's going to shut down and we're going to build this uh, instead of that. Um, so goodbye Facebook, goodbye Instagram, goodbye TikTok, whatever platform it is. So if we woke up tomorrow and all we've been doing is using Facebook to be able to market our business and we wake up and that social media platform either has crashed or it doesn't exist anymore, we're going to freak out, right? You will literally have a panic attack and you'll be like, oh my God, my business, like how am I going to sell anything and how am I going to support my family and how am I going to eat and how am I going to pay my bills, blah, 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 right? And they are all very, very real uh, fears because how would you if you no longer were able to market to a database or to a following um, that you had been in the past? So please don't take these platforms for granted and just think that they're always going to be there because they may not be, right? We do not know what happens. Businesses make different decisions every single day that are outside of our control and we cannot control it if people decide to go in different directions with their business or with their lives. So while we have them and whilst you're building a business and whilst you're attracting you know, people that are interested in your products or services um, or people who are buying from you, your number one goal is to be able to again bring them over into a platform that you've got more control of. Now you may then say, oh, but Lou, my email provider may kind of do the same thing, right? It may decide that it doesn't want to be available either. Now, if that was the case, one, we can't control it so much, but at least, um, you know, the chances of that happening are probably a little bit less. Two, if that business decided that it was going to shut down, hopefully they would give us an hour's notice. We could go in, we can export all of the information that we've got, and we would be able to then, you know, we've got at least uh, email addresses and details we could put into a different platform and continue um, onwards again. So that's another reason why we want to make sure that we are building um, an email community. So what has that got to do with selling? So as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, over time, 80% of people will buy from an email marketing list. And the reason why that is, is that person wants to be there, they see more of your content, you're able to provide them a mix of valuable content, you know, sales-based content, get to know us behind the scenes. You can take the same pillars that you've got for your social media marketing and you can use the, that like similar content so that those people get to know, like and trust you often much quicker because they want to hear from you and they want to read from you and they want to get to know more about you. Now, just like a follower, if they don't want to, then they can unsubscribe and that is cool as well. So do we just rely on email marketing? No, because we need to get the people like into our email list. And if you do face-to-face -face events like networking or markets, then that's cool. You can obviously, um, you know, give them your details and then they can subscribe. And the online space is exactly the same. We give them ways in which, you know, why people could come along and join that list. And that gives us clock number two in the marketing matrix. So. Other cogs in this marketing matrix, I've guessed it then, is talking to people face to face, right? Even if you've got an online business, you can still, or at some point, you're going to talk to somebody and they're going to go, oh, what do you do? And then you go, oh, I do this. And they go, oh, well, I need that. Or my friend needs that. Or my brother needs that, etc. right? So just by human interaction, a question will often come up. What do you do? Tell me more about it. It's not a sales pitch, you're simply just telling them and if that's of interest to them, you can give them the details of where they find your, your products or your services um, online or a website address. Uh, you've also got networking events and markets, right? So we've got that human to human interaction, which is a cog in our wheel. Then we've got social media, which gives us the opportunity to be more proactive, 
we decide when we want to talk about things. We're still building relationships with people. We can talk to people in our PMs and DMs and we can get them to comment and we can build a relationship that way. Again, this cog of the wheel is still building relationships with people. It's just in a different way than what it was in um, real life. Then we've got email marketing. Guess what? That again is talking to people. Uh, again, it is just in a different way in which we've been talking to people previously. Then another cog in the wheel is through paid advertising. Guess what? Again, that's with people. Only this way, we're able to pay to get our content in front of an audience um, that we've designed that uh, based on the information that we've got in our email databases and on social media, we're able to pay to put our content in front of people who've got the problems that our products and services solve. Uh, then we can do collaborations, um, you know, paid advertising with collaborators, right? So there are so many ways in which we've got opportunities to um, be building relationships with people and then encouraging them to get to know, like, and trust us and talk about the problems they've got and then be able to just organically, naturally sell. So this brings me back to the topic of today's episode. If you are solely relying on Facebook or Instagram to, to build a business, it is going to take you a really long time, right? So your number one goal is to say, right, if people have the problems that my products and services solve, where are those people and how can I build a relationship with them? I'm currently using Facebook and Instagram. Amazing. What else can I be doing? Where else are they? How else can I get them to be coming and following me online or coming into my email database so I can build a relationship with them quicker? Um, you know, you've got to be constantly thinking and being very strategic, right? So I'm not saying, right, you now need to finish watching this and you need to go and join all of the social media platforms, start a YouTube channel, start a podcast. Um, you know, I'm not saying go and do all of the things. What I am just simply saying is that you've got to think strategically on how you can reach more people and how you can build a relationship with more people more effectively so that you can continue to increase the brand awareness, um, how you help people and encourage them to buy from you. Now, I was talking to a client of mine um, a couple of weeks ago, last week or the week before, about what to do next. So he's got really great uh, in-person networking and he's got a really solid in-person uh, network going for him. And he's got a really, he's doing a good job at building his online uh, network as well. And he said, oh, well, Lou, what's my next step? Do I now go and do a podcast or a YouTube? And I said, no, your next step would be to go ahead and to really focus on building this email database and then um, you know so you're building a platform so that more people get you know uh, to know like and trust you and then start working on your influence um, you know through podcast marketing uh, YouTubes and collaborations but if you haven't set the pillars up and you've got no way for people to be able to hear from you and to continue to build long-lasting relationships then you're doing a lot of work that is just not going to be able to convert uh, over time. So, so yes, so that is today's episode. Uh, if you've got questions, whether you've watched this live or you're watching the replay, then please go ahead and drop them in the comments. I would love to answer them. Uh, if it's not about this topic, but you've got a question about something else, please let me know and I will do an episode on that, either answering the question myself or with one of my special guests that will be coming uh, in future episodes. So I guess I really hope that if you've just been relying on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok to be selling, um, you know, to your ideal customers and clients, um, I hope that this has really, I guess, reinforced that email marketing is very strong and that that is the next step that you should be focusing on in your business. Uh, if there is an area that you've been focusing on, keep doing it keep building it uh, and then maybe in the new year once you've started to be able to you know see some consistency in that space ask yourself how else you could be you know collaborating with others 
so that you can, um, you know, build your expertise, build your influence, um, and you can start working together with other people so that they can, um, you know, like-minded people so that they can share their products or services with your network and vice versa. So have an absolutely fabulous day. I hope this has been of huge value and I will see you next week uh, for episode number three.